They are the insiders, Chris Johnston, Pierre Lebron, and Darren Dreger. Just over a week to the NHL trade deadline for teams in dire need. It's almost a game of chicken trying to decide how long they can hold out before getting shut out. Darren, could the Oilers and Knights end up in a bidding war to fill their biggest need? Yeah, up front, a forward, yes, they could. I mean, let's be honest, the clock is ticking now, and all the top teams in the National Hockey League are trying to add something to upgrade to potentially load up. Now, the news out of the Vegas Golden Knights isn't good. Mark Stone, we know, we're told, is out for the regular season, and he is questionable for the Stanley Cup playoffs. So you can be certain that Kelly McCrimmon and the Golden Knights will utilize his cap space. We know that the Edmonton Oilers have been targeting a top six forward. So both teams are looking at players like Tyler Toffoli, Butch Nevich from the St. Louis Blues, maybe Jordan Eberle if he doesn't sign with the Seattle Kraken. I mean, go down the list from there. There is a list of high-level players potentially available, and you can be sure that the Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights are going to be among the top clubs trying to pick one up. Chris Tanev was sitting at number two on our trade bay board before the Flames moved him to Dallas. Who else was in the running for him, and how did the Flames end up going with the Stars, Pierre? I don't know why he wasn't number one. Who's in charge of that board? But, yeah, there was a lot of interest in Chris Tanev. Edmonton, Vancouver, Toronto and Colorado were the four finalists that we know of, other than the team that got them, of course, the Dallas Stars. But it tells you that three Canadian teams who have cup aspirations were in on TANF, which may also tell you what their next moves may be uh, in terms of perhaps upgrading their blue line. Um, you know, the Leafs had yet another conversation with Calgary on Wednesday, the day of the trade. But uh, my understanding is Brad Tree Living still not willing to move that first round pick in the TANF deal. And, Calgary moves on with a Dallas deal. And it's a deal that, that Calgary really liked. You know, they, they've been criticized for not getting a first in this deal. Um, but they like the prospect, Grishnikov. They see some Tanov-like attributes in him. And by the way, Calgary did have a first-round pick on the table in one of their trade offers. But it came with taking a player with term as part of the package. And that wasn't of interest to Calgary. So you understand the package they end up with, why it makes more sense for Calgary. When I can tell you the fact that they didn't get a first rounder back for Chris Tanov wasn't warmly received in places like Philadelphia and Arizona, where Sean Walker and Matt Dumba, respectively, are pending unrestricted de defensemen that are out there. And, and obviously, their teams were hoping to get a first rounder and are still hoping to get a first rounder back for them. I think the Philadelphia situation is most interesting with Walker because you get to a point where if it isn't a first rounder, and that's not to say it won't be, but it becomes a little tougher with the market now set by the, the Tanov move. And then does Philadelphia move on from him? They're in a playoff spot. I think there'll be a decision if they don't like the return, maybe just to keep him as their own player. As for Dumba, I do think Arizona is committed to, to moving on from him. They've had a long losing streak here. And, you know, they made a move last year at Edmonton at the deadline for Nick Bugstad, where they didn't get as high of a pick as they wanted, but they got a, a player they liked. And, you know, maybe that's the path for a Dumba deal if a first-rounder doesn't materialize for the Coyotes. CJ Pierre mentioned the Leafs were going hard for Tanev. Now that that didn't work out, what's plan B for them? Well, let's start right where I finished there. I think Matt Dumba is a player that makes a lot of sense for Toronto. Obviously, you know, this week we've seen them play a couple games with six left-handed defensemen. Uh, they're looking for someone on the right side. I think Dumba, with the way he elevated himself, played pretty well in the playoffs last year for Minnesota. His extensive history, the way he plays physically makes some sense. Another one is Ilya Labushkin, who, of course, finished a couple seasons ago as a member of the Maple Leafs. He's been down in Anaheim, and I don't think the Ducks have necessarily fully committed to moving on from Labushkin, but he's a player that certainly has garnered some interest from Toronto's end of things. Well, and you speak about what's next for the Leafs. What's next for Calgary? They still have a major player that they will probably trade in Noah Hannafin, another pending UFA. They've been unable to sign him. As of Thursday, my understanding is that there was really nothing close on a Hannafin trade. We know that can change quickly, but I think it speaks to the complex situation they have there in that two of the teams that really covered him, Boston and Tampa Bay, neither one of them has a first round pick in this year's draft. It also, there's a complication. Hannafin has a modified no trade. There are certain places he would go. And I think his agent, Pat Brisson, perhaps talking about a potential extension, which complicates things. So. Uh, this may go the next Friday right to the wire on Noah Hannafin. And while teams are wheeling and dealing on the trade front right now, the Canucks have a key order business to take care of in-house strikes. Yeah, Elias Pettersson, and we know the Vancouver Canucks and Pettersson's agents, J.P. Barry and Pat Brisson, engaged with Canucks management on Tuesday, and discussions have continued 
over the course of this week, and they're negotiating on a variety of options. Now, it's important to note a player of this magnitude normally can command uh, a term of anywhere from four years, of course, to the eight-year maximum. As for the annual average salary, I suspect that it could come in just slightly above William Elander of the Toronto Maple Leafs at 11.5. But again, ongoing discussions. When they complete the process, then the agents will take all of these options to Pedersen, and he will decide which is the best fit for his future. Sounds good. They are the insiders. Chris Johnson, Pierre Lebrun, and Darren Dreger.